Good morning. Just want to speak to you today from small book in the Old Testament, Nahum. Small three chapters are from between Michael and Habakkuk. And we want to start reading from the first chapter in verse number one. The burdens of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, uh, the Elkanites. Then I want to drop down and read in verse number seven, for we'll take our text from today. The Lord is good, a strong hold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Amen. Just want to speak to you briefly on this matter. The Lord is good. Amen. If you know anything about Nineveh, it takes us back to Jonah. And we know that Jonah was called to go down and preach to Nineveh. But instead of Jonah obeying what God had called him to do, he decided to take a vacation and go elsewhere. But you know the story and you heard it over and over again about how God allowed Jonah to get cast into the ocean and swallowed up by a fish that he had prepared for his disobedient. And in Jonah's case, he did not want the people over in Nineveh to be saved. He was angry at God for God wanted to spare them if they came to repentance. So Jonah abandoned his assignment. And here we are some 100 years later that this prophet, a minor prophet, Nahum, began to warn Nineveh of the burdens that had came up against them and had came up before the Lord once again. It reminds me of how good God is unto us. It reminds me that over and over time and time again and again God speaks to us either through his prophets or through his word and he shows mercy each and every day to us. But in fact, that a matter of God goodness, we still seem to rebel against God's word. And we can bring it into today's time. We can say we are living in a Nineveh today. Time and time again, God give us his mercy and his grace each and every day. The word tells us God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. And so we find over here in this prophet's writing that God first declares that he is a jealous God. We know that he's a jealous God because he tells us that we shouldn't put any other God before him. Amen. Amen. He wants all of the praises and the glory to be given unto him because he is worthy to be glorified and to be magnified through our praises unto him. But we find over in Nineveh there was all kind of wickedness going on. I mean if you can name it, it was probably going on. And even in our day and time here in the United States we believe that there's a lot of wickedness going on in our own country. Amen, amen. If we just think about and look at the news for any period of time, how we are in a pandemic right now, 
and a COVID-19 crisis. Now we are faced with rioting and looting because of an unjust murder by ones who are called out to protect. And we can go on and on and on. We find now we are in a big chaos with employment. A lot of businesses that have shut down. A lot of people who had never got in food lines to receive food handouts are now finding themselves in the line to receive food. And we can go on and on and on naming different things that is going on right now in our world and right in our own countries. Amen. That we know He's jealous. And we know that God revenges the wicked ones. And where sin abounds, God has a plan for the wicked and the sinful. The Lord will one day take vengeance on those of his adversaries and he will reserve wrath for his enemies. But we know today from our uh, text that God is good. And it goes on, the prophet writes, that he is a stronghold in the day of trouble. We are in some critical times right now. But we can't abolish our praises to God and our trust in Him. Because God says, I'm able to keep you from falling. And so the burdens of the Lord came up before Him. And he sent the prophet to speak to Nineveh to denounce judgment on them against a nation or against a city. And time and time again, God wanted Nineveh to know that he loved them so much and all they had to do was turn from their evil ways. This book is called the Book of Vision. As the prophets were of old, they are called seers. They see and do what God called them out to do. So their prophecies were called visions. It is a vision of Nahum. According to St. Jerome, it signifies his name as a comforter. For we know that ten tribes was being carried away by the king kingdom of Assyria. This vision was sent to Nineveh to comfort them in their captivity. He wanted to console them, to let them know he's still the same God of old as he is anew. And so when the eight tribes fell under the Assyrians, there was two tribes that remained in the land and had been besieged by the same enemy to hear that these conquerors would in time be conquered by the Assyrians themselves. Their city would be taken and ravished and their empire would be overthrown. So God will revenge his people. Amen. Amen. But with an overrunning of trouble over in Nineveh, all they had to do was turn their hearts back to God. We live in a time today that we know God is good. Well, how do you know God is good? Well, one of the reasons I know He's good because I'm a witness today. 
He woke me up this morning. He started me on another day's journey. He watched over me all night long. And he told me to rise and see a new day. For truly I can say that this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad within it. So God is a good God. He know how to hold us in the day of trouble. Amen, amen. If it had not been for the God, the Lord on our side, where would we be? Where would we be if God did not hold the world right now in the hollow of his hand? Even though the world is calling the time that we are in dark, but we as children of light don't walk in darkness. God have called us to be children of light. Because we know that God is a very present help in time of trouble. And we know, and he knows them that trust in him. Amen, amen. You can slide by for a while. You can fake it until you make it. But God knows when you're faking. God is not one that should be marked. He knows those who are called out who trust in Him. That lean not to His own understanding, but in all their ways acknowledge the Lord. As a stronghold, have you ever had a stronghold or had something to have a stronghold on you? Well, you see, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ because, you see, once sin had a stronghold on me. Couldn't shake it off, but God know how to deliver you in time of trouble. I thank Him today that I'm not what I used to be. I thank God today that I have a God who sits high and looks low. That his eyes roam throughout the earth day and night. The word tells us he never sleeps nor slumbers. And even in a pandemic that we're in, where we see this COVID-19 have seen to overtake the whole world and run and wrap it about. But God knows how to put an end to his enemy. His enemy is causing chaos in the land. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is hold on to God's unchanging hand. Mm -hmm. Trust in Him. Mm -hmm. Don't have trust now you're doing good. Amen. Don't have that microwave trust. Even though I know we're living in 2020, we have a lot of things, a lot of they benefit in our use in our time today. But God knows who trusts in Him. There was a saying, easy up the ladder, fast back down. God knows how to keep you on the ladder. He has never failed a case yet. And so we know that He's good. He is omnipotent with his love and today I just wanted to want want to encourage you hang on in there mm -hmm. see God so loved Nineveh so much to even 100 years after they had sinned and fallen away from God he raised up another prophet mm -hmm. to speak to them because he loved them so much that he didn't want to cast judgment upon them. And so today we stand, we preach, we tell men, women, boys and girls that the goodness of God today, his hands is always stretched out, calling us into repentance. When God closes one door, He's able to open another. 
Even in this time that we are in, we can't congregate together in our buildings. But let me just clarify one thing. The church is not the building. It is the call out believers of God. And when you can fall down on your knees early in the morning and say, thank you, God, for another day's journey. Thank you from where you brought me. You brought me from a mighty long ways. And it has been said, and some of non-believers have said this in talking in conversations, that if you're doing bad and you believe in God, I don't want to believe in the same God that you believe in. I can do bad all by myself. Amen. And I replied to them, I would rather do bad with God on my side than to do bad with God not on my side. Amen. See, that is a fool's statement. God know how to deliver his people. He's all wise. He's all knowing. He's from Genesis to Revelations. And all in between, we find where God time and time over and over again delivered his people. But when disobedience overtakes us, we can be like Nineveh. Or we can be like Jonah, ab abolishing our call and our duty. But be obedient unto your call. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve Him with a pure heart. Because the scripture tells us today that God knows them that trust in Him. And in my closing today, Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads today. There's no reason to walk with our head down. Look up to heaven. Look up to the hills which come with our help. Knowing all our help coming from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And if you fall down, you can look up, you can get up. This too one day shall come to pass. And you'll look back and you'll share with your grandkids and their kids about how God brought us out of this mess that we are in. And I always say this and, and I'll end with this. When God put a leader over a country or a nation, he is called the head. But when the head is corrupt, and when the head is out of shape, the body is out of shape. It doesn't function right because the head is our computer center where the body reacts to what the brain is telling it to do. We need a new head today. Our head needs surgery today. He needs delivering today because our head is out of shape. And I close with that. May God bless you and may He keep you until we speak again. God bless you.